My name is Jean McLean. I'm the Associate Director of the Water Resources Research Center at the University of Arizona. And I'm here to talk today about a multi-institutional and international effort that has been underway for about three years now. The main objective of this program is to develop collaborative teams between researchers working in the area of environmental antibiotic resistance and to communicate the state of the science regarding antibiotic resistance and So as we are undoubtedly all aware, in the year 2000, the World Health Organization identified antibiotic resistance as one of the most critical human health challenges of the next century. We organized the state of the science effort not to focus blame on any individual sector of antibiotic users, but we organized it more because we recognized that the release of trace antibiotics and resistance genes is occurring in agroecosystems, but that the effects of this release are largely unknown. So in 2013, um, I wrote a proposal with two collaborators. The first collaborator was Lisa Durso of the USDA ARS Agroecosystem Management Unit in Lincoln, Nebraska. My second collaborator was Dan Snow of the University of Nevada, Nebraska in Lincoln. And this proposal was funded by the USDA NEFA Division of Food Safety. The funded work proposed a meeting in 2014 that was held at the University of Arizona Biosphere 2 Conference Center in Oracle, Arizona. This four-day meeting and a follow-up meeting that occurred in February 2015 brought together 50 top researchers and students from university and government locales in five countries. And the purpose of the meeting addressed three objectives. First, to address the complexity of information available to scientists in the peer-reviewed literature, we plan to openly discuss and debate methods used to examine antibiotic release and resistance development in agroecosystems. We had hoped to reach a consensus on the methods that were being used to assess antibiotic resistance in the environment. There are so many genes that we could target. Which ones? Which antibiotics? How many isolates did we need to study in, in individual, individual sectors? Our second objective was to train the next generation in new methods, so to really actively involve students in these meetings. And our third objective was to review, was to um, put together review papers covering the state of the science. So as aforementioned, the meetings were held in August 2014 and February 2015. At the first meeting, we realized that coming to consensus on methods was probably, probably quite overly ambitious. Rather, what we needed to do was step back and look at where we currently stand in resistance research and to communicate these thoughts in a series of review papers in a high-impact agricultural journal. And here you see some pictures that were taken at, at the meeting and the subsequent uh, workshop. You can see we're working very hard. As of March 1st, 2016, the review papers are in print in a special section of the Journal of Environmental Quality. You will note the guest editors, most probably including names that you recognize. These six review papers lead a, a 19 additional volunteer papers that cover research on antibiotic use and resistance in agroecosystems. Agro I want to point out that all of the review papers are open access thanks to the USDA NEFA grant. In the next two slides as I discuss the papers, I have included the URLs where anyone can access and download these reviews. The first paper, led by Allison Franklin, who is currently a graduate student at Penn State University, serves as a summary of the information of the other five reviews. The authors of this paper included Diana Aga of the University of Buffalo, New York, 
Lisa Durso, Mike Roth, Rothrock and Rob Dungeon of the USDA ARS, Eddie Citrian of the Volcani Institute in Israel, myself, Marilyn Roberts of the University of Washington, Dan Snow of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and Jack Watson of Penn State University. As I describe each of the reviews over the next slides, I will briefly go through the author list the purpose of which will be to illustrate the diversity in geography and training that went into the authorship of each of these papers. The core ideas of the first review, um, it covered, this first review covered the emerging threat of antibiotic resistant bacteria, but also uh, showed that the impact of antibiotics at very low concentrations, such as can be found in agroecosystems, is not known. This, this paper highlighted the need for research as well as the need for standard approaches in, in, uh, in tackling these research questions. You will note a red box around Allison Franklin's name. If you recall, one of the primary objectives of this project was to actively involve students in the work to, pro to provide training to the next generation of scientists. And I am pleased to report that the students participated in the writing of all six of the review papers and served as lead authors on three of them. As I mentioned, the URL for downloading each of these papers is included in the individual slides. The second paper in the special section, and by the way, these are presented in the order that they appear in the Journal of Environmental Quality. Um, the second paper was led by PhD student Jessica Williams Wynn from the University of Washington. Contributing were graduate student Brett Salak and researchers Shannon Bartelt Hunt and Dan Snow from the University of Nebraska Lincoln, Alistair Boxall from York, York University in the United Kingdom. Lisa Durso, myself, Randy Singer from the University of Minnesota, and Julie Ziles from the University of Illinois. The core ideas of this paper were that the lack of data really does hinder, hinder our ability to make accurate risk assessments of antibiotics and resistance in agroecosystems. And that in particular, the contribution of horizontal gene transfer between bacteria requires a lot more research. This particular review paper is getting quite a bit of attention for proposing a very unique causal model that illustrates and describes in detail the interconnectedness of environmental pools of, environmental resi of antibiotic resistance. The purpose of this model is to introduce the One Health concept of antibiotic resistance in agroecosystems. The authors hope that this model will stimulate critical thought that will result in collaboration between researchers who had not previously worked together for, to a large degree, such as clinical microbiologists working together with soil scientists. The third review focused on detection of antibiotics in environmental matrices was led by Diana Aga of the University of Buffalo. Melissa Lencheski of Northern Illinois University and Dan Snow of University of Nebraska also contributed. This paper also had three contributing students, Johanna Murinen of the University of Helsinki in Finland, Brett Salak from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and Joshua Wallace from the University of Buffalo. The core ideas of this paper are that Matrix, of matrix effects are a large challenge in the analysis and detection of antibiotics. Detection of antibiotics may be relatively easy in water, but when you're dealing with soil or biosolids or raw manure, the matrix effect effects become much, much more of a challenge. The paper discussed bioreporters and how they show a promise in the, in the detection of antibiotics and also discuss that not just the antibiotics themselves, but their transformation products, as well as their synergistic and antagonistic effects must be studied. The 
The fourth review tackled the confounding factor of natural antibiotic resistance and stressed the importance of incorporating background and baseline resistance into study design. This paper was led by Mike, Mike Rothrock of the USDA in Athens, Georgia, and it was co-authored by three additional USDA ARS scientists, Lisa Durso, as well as Kim Cook from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Rob Dungeon from Kimberly, Idaho. Joining the author list were Patricia Keene of the University of British Columbia and graduate student Allison Franklin of Penn State University. Core ideas of this paper are that we need improved uh, databases of baseline resistance and what actually is background and baseline resistance in different ecosystems. There is a need for standard terminology as well as criteria for identifying and dealing with background, natural, and baseline antibiotic resistance. This paper also introduced a very unique decision-making tool that is designed to guide researchers in identifying appropriate resistance targets in their study design. Such a tool represents an attempt to standardize the research and allow cross that will allow cross-comparison of research results across ecosystems and addressing the con connectedness illustrated in the causal model that was previously described. A review of cultural methods used in antibiotic resistance research was led by myself with co-authors Lisa Durso, Eddie Citrian of the Volcani Institute in Israel, and graduate student Suzanne Young of the University of South Florida. This paper covered the advantages as well as the challenges of cult culture-based methods, the advantages including the fact that these methods are reproducible and they expose bacteria to a range of antibiotics and concentrations as well as represent a key way to, uh, to generate data on multiple antibiotic resistance. The challenges of culture-based methodology include that they are low, throw, low throughput and therefore represent um, something of a, of a, a money, money input and also that the interpretive criteria for resistance do change over time. So researchers have to be used, have to be certain that they're using the latest and most up-to-date databases. The paper concludes that full insight into antibiotic resistance in agroecosystems requires both molecular and cultural data, which, which leads to the final paper, which unraveled some of the complexity of molecular methods used to assess antibiotic resistance in agroecosystems. This paper was led by graduate student Liz Luby of Iowa State University and include a co-authors Mark Ibekwe of the USDA ARS in Riverside, California, Julie Ziles of the University of Illinois, and Amy Pruden of Virginia Tech University. The core ideas of this, of this uh, paper are that molecular methods obviously are very complex and that uh, the methods and targets chosen for molecular methods must carefully match the research questions. It pointed out that uh, molecular methods most often measure the potential for antibiotic resistance rather than measuring the actual expression of these genes. And that very, very um, importantly, that we need to establish links between the molecular methods used and the human health risk. Stepping back to the 2013 proposal to the USDA, the original objectives of this project were to openly discuss and debate tools used to track resistance in agroecosystems, discuss tools for addressing the confounding factor of background resistance, and it actively involve students in all levels of the workshop to introduce them to the scientific process, and finally to effectively disseminate the conference results. I'm pleased to report that antibiotics and agroecosystems state of the science accomplished all of this and more. 
Before I end, I need to acknowledge the guidance of Dr. Mervalyn Morant, who is the National Program Leader for NEFA's Food Safety Programs. There were multiple additional activities related to this funding that I don't have time to discuss today, and Dr. Morant's support and feedback were crucial to the success of this work. My contact information as well as the contact information of the project co-PIs is here if you are seeking URLs for the download of papers or any other information related to this work. 